Hello, David. I was just seeing LeBron's comments about not getting Kyrie. What's the clubhouse like the week of the trade deadline? Well, thanks for asking. I like the second question about what the clubhouse is like the week of a trade deadline because it's an absolute disaster. You're trying to manage all these personalities. Everybody's reading rumors about themselves. Everybody knows in the Lakers clubhouse that there's a problem. Russell Westbrook is walking around knowing that there's a chance that after February 9th, he's somewhere else. And he looks around and says, how many teams can take my bloated salary? Even though I'm playing well as a sixth man, the Lakers are below 500. Kyrie wants to trade. LeBron wants to play with Kyrie. LeBron makes it clear he wants to play with Kyrie. You think Russell Westbrook is not packing a duffel JIC? You don't think he's looking at places where he may want to live around Brooklyn? Easy access to the Barclays Center? Of course he was doing that. Trade doesn't happen, of course. Kyrie goes to Dallas. And then LeBron has to walk in. And he tries to soften it by sending a tweet. Maybe it's me. Maybe what's you, LeBron? What? The fact that they didn't listen to you? The fact that you weren't offering enough as an organization? You couldn't outbid Dallas? Or the fact that it's you that the team is not playing well? No. You're still a top 10 player in the game at 38 years old. You're about to pass Kareem. It's not you. It's everybody else. You know how when you want to end a relationship or you always say to someone, it's not you, it's me. Or when something goes wrong or you can't perform or whatever the case is. Hey, hey, it's not you. It's totally me. My brain's elsewhere. My body's elsewhere, whatever the case is. What that really means is, hint, hint, it's not me, it's you. But I'm going to say it's not you, it's me, because that'll make you feel better about the fact that it actually is you. But in LeBron's case, when he says maybe it's me, what he really means is, hey, Rob, I think it's you. That's Rob Palenka, the GM. Sure as hell isn't him. So this week right now, we are heading to the deadline. What's the date today? Today's the 7th. The trade deadline is the 9th. I do not know what time the NBA trade deadline is, but here's what happens when teams are in their clubhouse. There are two trains of thought. My train and my GM's train, all the GMs who ever worked under me, with me, for me, against me in some cases. I like keeping players in the loop. When there were players we were trading at the deadline of the trade, the trade deadline, I would say to them, hey, I don't know if a trade's gonna happen, but we're in active discussions. You understand why you're gonna be a free agent. We're not sure if we can re-sign you and we have a chance to get something for you. And by the way, we really don't have a likely chance of making the playoffs. Or, hey, you're reading about yourself. Let me tell you what's true, what's not true. The reason I was okay communicating with players is that when it didn't hurt my leverage or hurt anything about the competitive ability to make a trade, then what's the problem in letting a player know what's happening? If I thought that there was going to be an issue with that player knowing, and that player was going to do something to try to subvert what our goals were, and players have done that, where they'll do something crazy or they'll call teammates on another team and say, by the way, I'm rumored to be going to you. I won't even show up. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to leave my home. I don't want to leave my kids, whatever the reason is. Or they call their teammates, their current teammates, and say, hey, they better trade me. Want to leak the fact that I'm unhappy and I want to be traded. There's all sorts of back and forth that goes on. I always liked communicating inside the clubhouse. There are GMs who don't. They just, at the end of the deadline, after the trades are done, every team has a team meeting. Just as a little side note, after every trade deadline, every team has a meeting in the clubhouse or locker room because you've got to move on to the rest of the season and the tumult is behind you. One of the reasons why MLB stopped the trade deadline of being in both in July and in August, you remember that? There was the July 31st deadline and then there was an August 31st waiver trade deadline, which to make a long story short, players were eligible to be traded only if they cleared waivers and you could block players from clearing waivers, which would stop them from being traded to your competitors. There's a lot of examples of that happening if you if you Google it. But there were two different deadlines, and, and presidents and GMs didn't love that. And the reason they didn't love that is you have a clubhouse issue in July. You fix it July 31st at the end of the deadline, but then it sort of creeps up again as you go through August, and you've got to go through the whole same damn thing again, where at the end of August, you have to say, all right, this is our team now. 
Go get him in September. Meanwhile, we're about to lose 100 games. No one gives a crap and no one's paying attention and everyone's playing selfishly. Or you're in the middle of a pennant race and you're like, hey, sorry about the distraction. We lost a few games there, didn't we? But now let's focus. Either way, there was not a lot of great upside, which caused MLB, among other reasons, to make one trade deadline. In the NBA, it's the same thing that's happening. Think about what's going on right now in Brooklyn as a great example. You think that Finney Swift, Smith and Dinwiddie are out there renting apartments for the rest of the year? You don't think they're thinking about, wow, what if they package me along with these first round picks they got and make a bigger move to put someone next to KD? Or what do you think is going on in LA? Are they going to attach me? What if I get attached? You think that Markeith Morris was thinking to himself, hey, I'm ready to go to Dallas with Kyrie. It was the last thing he was thinking about. So the way these trades happen is they get expanded. You try to involve other teams. There was a rumor yesterday. This is a good one. The reason why the Nets Mavericks deal for Kyrie did not get announced until late yesterday is it was reported that the Nets were looking to get a third team involved and make it a bigger trade because they're trying to get better. And the problem with that leak is it doesn't serve the Brooklyn Nets organization. Because when you leak that you wanted to do a three-way trade and not a two-way trade, but you end up with the two-way trade, what that's saying to your team is, hey, we're not good enough after the two-way trade, and we really needed a three-way trade to make this trade worthwhile. So, hey, guys, we got back from Dallas. We love you. Here's your uniform. Here's your locker. But by the way, I wouldn't buy dishes. So they couldn't get the third team in, so they announced the two-team trade. And then, you know, word came out that it was going to be Markeith Morris going as well. It's just funny to me that that's how trades work. There's an ad here. There's a subtract there. You want this guy? Fine. Then we want that guy. We have to make it like it's a two for two plus picks. Be that as it may, the tension is palpable. So in LA, it's real. In Brooklyn, it's real. What about the Knicks? You don't think the Knicks are sitting around saying, wow, another year of mediocrity. We were playing great for a moment. We really have a chance here. We'd like to get out of the first round for the first time in forever. We may have to move some guys. So you've got Fournier sitting around or Quigley, everyone sitting around saying, is it me? Is it not me? Could it be me? Do you think anyone would take on my deal? Hi, I'm Randall. It all ends in 48 hours. And the importance of that meeting after a trade deadline cannot be understated. The importance is this. If your players don't believe you about your belief in them, they're not going to play well going forward. And we all say the same thing after the deadline. We are proud that you're our guys. Let's go. You don't think Russell Westbrook hears that and looks at him and says, screw you. You would move me for anything if I weren't making as much money as I'm making. I know you don't believe in me. So you got to be careful what you're saying. You need to do some side conversations, pull some people aside before you start. Talk to some people when you're done meeting with the team. Try to get players to work on your behalf as you're trying to mend fences. There are bruised feelings, bruised egos. All that happens after the trade deadline. And up to the deadline, there's a lot of chattering. That we I used to walk in the clubhouse it's a true story. And the first thing you do, our clubhouse in pro player was more rectangular. And in Marlins Park, it was more like an oval. And we built the clubhouse in Marlins Park so all the players could actually see each other. And there weren't corners and, and there weren't trying to get rid of clicks, which of course didn't work, but that's what we tried. And when you walk in after a trade deadline into that clubhouse, there's players who are sitting in pockets. And you know that you have to look around, quickly surveil the situation and go to the pocket of players where they know that they were just about to be traded and didn't get traded. And you beeline over to them. You sit down. Hey, can I pull up a stool? Yes, that's a real thing. Or you could say pull up a chair. Hey, let me just tell you what went down. But think about the fact that if I had spoken to that player prior to the deadline, that player knew exactly what went down. And I'm going to do a recap. Talk about it. Hey, why didn't you move me? I've had players ask that. What were you offered? What did you expect? What did you want? But if you're one of the types of executives who doesn't tell the players anything till after the fact, you have to go meet the player and say, hey, I don't want to talk about it. Or, hey, yeah, I couldn't talk about it. It was going on. Dude, why didn't you give me a heads up? Yeah, I just felt like I couldn't. Think about it. You're already behind the eight ball when you're having the conversations. So there were multiple reasons why I did what I did. But I liked your question. What's the clubhouse like the week of the trade deadline? Very, very quiet, very nervous, but it's almost over in the NBA.